Here we go. I believe it's recording now. Yes. Yep, I think so. Yeah. So just um it's let's see. Uh I'm gonna wait a few folks. Oh, if you can this is you know, that's what I do with my students in if, if everybody's engaged. Yeah. So yeah. With the the I see the reactions, you know how to use Zoom after so many, like <laughs> this pandemic. Yeah. So yes, I'm gonna ask you a really quickly thing. So show me your thumb if you understand. So you can show me the video or you can send the reaction thing. So let's see how fast you can go. And uh, there's a clap too, you know, you see the clap and and there's like a, yep, clap. And, and there's another reaction which is like raise your hand, you know, like simple things like that, but it's important. So wanna see, I wanna see how fast you can do this. And I'm gonna ask you and you gotta do, okay? You gotta follow me because that's, that's remember I say, that's a really interactive um, a lecture. And show me your thumb. See how many, almost, we gotta do more quickly, okay? Okay, so show me your clap. Great, perfect. So what I ask in this? So first of all, thank you. Thanks for Stephen to invite me. Ah, it's our pleasure. Can I can I introduce you? Get uh, yes, read a little bit sure. of your bio. All yeah, right, sure, good. Sure. Everybody can practice with your uh, with your uh, aim, uh, what do we call them? Your reactions yeah. as I read uh, McGill's bio. And Miguel, I have you as Miguelito. Which do you prefer? It's either way. Miguelito, oh. you know, that's many people in the music scene, they know me by Miguelito. And actually everybody, just in the school, sometimes they, they call me Miguel, but even in my family, they call me Miguelito, okay. you know, because I, I'm a short. And so that's Miguelito is the short thing for Miguel. Um, Sounds good. Okay. I will, I will choose randomly. Yep, one or the other. All right. So uh, Miguelito is born in Chiapas, Mexico, and studied music education, transversal flute, the transverse flute, mm -hmm. uh, from the University of Science and Art in Chiapas and the University at uh, Veracruz. Uh, Miguelito has been trained in Kodai and Dow Crow's methods and has his ORF Schulwerk music certification by the San Francisco ORF International Level and Masterclass with immersive hands-on experience and uh, or Schulwerk African Indigenous Music Education uh, and uh, from Ghana. Uh, he has extensive experience teaching multicultural music from preschool to the postgraduate level in Mexico, Cuba, and uh, the United States. Miguelito has been a guest clinician for the American Orf Schulwerk Association, the California Music Education Association and the Oakland Unified District. Uh, Miguelito is a music teacher specialist for Young Imagination, East Bay Center for Performing Arts and Youth and Arts, teaching all over the Bay Area from kindergarten through high school. He's been a guest lecturer for San Francisco State, UC Berkeley, San Jose State, UC Santa Cruz, Fresno State, San Francisco City College. And for many years, Miguelito was working at Escuela Bilingüe International, uh, developing an international baccalaureate uh, program of music. In 2009, he was selected by the Milagro Foundation to be on the Voices del Cambio show on the Discovery Channel, in which he shared his insight on how to utilize music as an instrument for newcomer children from Latin America to integrate into their new community. Martinez has been a music teacher and multicultural arts educator since 2004 in the Bay Area, and currently he is the middle school music teacher specialist at Park Day School in Oakland, California. Please help me welcome Miguelito Martinez. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank oh. you. Thank you, Steven. So, you know, before we start talking about the music from Mexico, so um, we got to talk a little bit of our, my identity, you know, what I is in my background. So we want, that's what I say. This is going to be a little bit interaction that what, um, what it is. Uh, my name, like Miguel Martinez, that my my Western name, and my indigenous name, it's Ik, I K, which means wind. Um, and I play flutes, so I grew up playing a traditional music, the indigenous traditional music from Mexico, um, and playing a flute, 
but it's a different flute now, the transversal flute. Um, through the years, I, you know, playing all traditional with my family. And then when I'm in the middle school, you know how it's middle school, I didn't want to be part of the, that identity. Uh, because like here, like in everywhere, to be indigenous, it's it was uh, like, it's a lot of like bullying, racism, racism, all that stuff. And uh, and I wanna didn't want to be part of that because I say no, I wanna be with the cool kids. So I wanna play rock. I wanna play something else. So I wanna do something, you know. So I start playing like rock, and I was the emo, you know, doing all that stuff, and uh, playing rock and heavy metal. I start playing punk, uh, and. But I really want to study music. And the only school it was, it was in Chiapas, where I'm from. Um, and then they say the only school that was there was, was music education. That's how I founded Kodai. It was an amazing teacher there. And this, and for me, I say, wow, I don't want to study this. I just want to play the guitar. But later on, I found it really interesting. And it was another part of my identity when I found that music, which is music education. It was really important for me because uh, I, th I think in the music education, I found something really important. And also I started studying classical music, which was great, you know, for, was great. So I started studying class, uh, classical guitar, but then I developed tendonitis and I left the guitar and I took the flute. And I started playing the flute, you know, studied the flute for a few years. And then I went to Veracruz um, when I was ending the high school to study at the conservatory in Veracruz. Flute, like a classical training. And I was for many years there, but in Veracruz is, there's so many popular, amazing popular music, amazing, amazing, amazing popular music. And then uh, I found that like, there was something like in me, like it didn't, click with the classical music. You know, my background, I start learning all about Mozart, Beethoven, Bach, everything, you know, playing. And I was playing a soloist too with the orchestra and everything. But it, it was something like I really needed. And then when I found the Son Jarocho and, you know, Son Cubano and other these different genres of music, I found that this is what I want to do. And I finished the school and I went to Cuba to study more about the Afro-Cuban music. And then I came back to Mexico, again to Veracruz, and I started mixing all this Cuban with Mexican thing. Um, then I came to the United States. I was invited for the University of Tulu uh, in New Orleans. And, and then I decide, I say, wow, this is important. I gotta do this. This mixing of, me nobody knows exactly what is Mexican music, you know? Everybody knows what is mariachi or banda now, you know, that's all. Or they think something, or la cucaracha, something really like, you know, uh, familiar, but nobody knows exactly what is the real, real thing about the Mexican music. So I came here to San Francisco, to San Francisco, I moved here, and then, my first gig was with the, for the ethnic dance festival with a company for the ballet folkloricos of San Francisco. And they played something like really traditional and it was with a flute, something like grew up playing. And, and, no, and there's nobody who was playing here that kind of music say, hey, I grew up this, I can play. Then I, I started like getting this, for me, it was really important. I said, my, my indigenous side, I say, hey, this is who, I, uh, who am I, and I have to embrace that. Since then, I've been working with this, with all these genres of music, but specific right now, I've been doing lectures and different. Also, I, I, I start writing a book about all the traditional music from Mexico. And that is what I want to explain to you today. And all these different, what is the to be Mexican or the identity of being um, here in the United States. And let me see if you can hear. I'm gonna do a little little game with you. Uh, Steven, can I sh share something? 
because I wanna see if if you can give me because I gotta share the the music. Got it? So let's see. I cannot share. Let's see. Well, in the meantime, when when is this? So I gonna so you gonna uh, by the way, Thompson, you're muted. Yep. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, give me a second here. There's a little issue on my side. Oh, it's okay. I'm, right on, I'm on it. So in the meantime, tell me, uh, we're going to use this, the chat. Number one, I'm going to put music. And you're going to say, if you put number one, it means like the music where you hear, you think is from Mexico. If you put number two, you think it's not from Mexico. If you put number three, it's like you don't know, you don't have a clue. Like maybe or maybe not. But two is like, no, no from Mexico. One is from Mexico. Got it? So let's see on the chat how many are it's in the moment like I can share this. Yeah, you're on. You can share now. Okay. So let's see. I'm going to share. Let's see. Computer audio. Tell me if you can hear this. Here. I want to see a chat. Remember, one, two, or three. Okay, next one. We gotta do this.
Now I'm going to tell you which one I have the least here. Actually, all the music that I put was from Mexico. All of that. So it's just to put it a little bit of the diversity what we have in Mexico. It's unbelievable. It's the same like, you know, we have these three different roots from European, from the indigenous and from African roots. Same. But nobody talks a lot about this. So and that's a, today we're going to talk about a little bit of this. I'm going to show you a little bit of my a little presentation. Uh, let me see what is it. Mm, sorry. Can find the what is can I share it still? Oh okay, here's and share with some. Can you see that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's see. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let me go to sorry. We're gonna go here. Okay. Um just give me one second. So if you see all these instruments, when you have opportunity, go to the uh, Mexican Museum in the in Mexico City and you're gonna find this. And you see this, the different instruments like are in the in, in the museum from the pre-Hispanic pre on to after pre-Colombian and after the Spanish. So then, hold on. What is the meaning of Mexico? Somebody know what is the meaning of Mexico? Do you hear something? No? So Mexico, uh, the meaning is belly bottom of the moon. Uh, Mexico, actually it's not Mexico, it's Mexico. Okay, so it's in Nahuatl language. Nahuatl language was is one of the most uh, well-known language in Mexico. We have 68 different language, indigenous language. So you see here, I'm from the state of Chiapas, which is here. The music what you hear from the marimba was from here. So, and we have 32 different states. It is a big country. and. Like I say, Veracruz is gonna, later we're, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Veracruz and for the music is really important. Each of this, I do this lecture at San Francisco State, but you know, it, it take like at least a semester to know all of this. So I'm gonna synthesize in just <laughs> less than an hour. So I will try to do my best, okay? But if you have a question, just say something, okay? Let's, okay, so Mexico has endless colors, like you see, smells, food is amazing, you know, taste, which is incredible. When you go to Mexico, the diversity of Mexico and food and colors is the same for the diversity of all these sounds, all these different things. Our culture is really rich. So. How many roots does Mexican music have? Like I said before, it has indigenous, European, and African. This is a little representation. Actually, the the roots, the when you go to Mexico City, there's like at the museum, you're gonna see all these paintings. And they represent of the mixing of the they say the criollos, the mestizos, the the people who used to be in Mexico a long time when after the Spanish came. Because when the Spanish came, remember. Uh, they were conquered by the Arabic, uh, the, the, the Arabic people for 800 years. So it was a big influence after the, you know, when the Spanish came, so we had that. And we're going to divide this, like I said, indigenous, European, and African. We're going to talk a little bit of this. So we have 68 different groups, which is 10% 10, 10 of the population. Around 11 million of indigenous live in Mexico right now, maybe more because this one was like a, a few years uh, 
I did this. No, like a year ago, maybe there's more. How many languages speak in Mexico? Somebody knows? I just said it. Let's see if you really, like says and directed. So can you write it on the chat and I will see if you are listening. <laughs> or you can say it. How many? 64. Almost, plus. Thank you, Valerie. Somebody, you're so close. 60. 68. Yes, why? Look at this, 68 different groups. <laughs> so, um, indigenous music are connected to nature and the elements. So we're gonna talk a little bit about this, why? So for the, for the indigenous, they're really connected to the nature and also all the instruments are representing an animal, but this animal represents an energy and also to the elements of life. You know what is the element of life? Somebody can tell me. Say it. You can say it. What is the elements of life? Somebody knows? Please. Water. Yes. Which one Earth. else? Yes. Fire. Yes. Uh, air. <laughs> exactly. Good. <laughs> Great. So yes, so indigenous are connected to nature and the elements of life. And usually all the instrumentals have a shape or sometimes a form of an animal. Like, but like I say, it means something, you know, these specific instruments represent the world of view of them. And also they, they recite almost everything. You know, I want to show you something. I'm sorry. I'm going to just give you a warning. If you're a vegan or something like that, it's not, you got to think in this. That's what I say all the time. Sometimes the indigenous are really connected to nature and they live with the nature. They just don't kill for something to kill. You know, they use that. Uh, they eat it. They make something. It's part of the community. And then they create an instrument. Uh, so... And also, like I said before, it has a meaning. Somebody can see this. You know what is this? A tortoise shell. Yes, it is a tortoise shell. Uh, and this one is used in most of the indigenous waves and other parts, and also chontales. They use like a percussive instrument. I grew up playing this little thing, you know, in for some, not all of in the culture in Mexico, they have a, this representation of the earth. And here is a little different in the Native American, they have another meaning. But in Mexico, especially in the South, in the coast of Pacific, so they, they, they believe this is the earth. So like, you know, the total carry the earth. Uh, and, but they play in a specific, a specific rhythm which is this, if you, if you know music, you're gonna know what is this. Somebody can tell me what is this? You're gonna hear a lot of this. And I wanna, you remember this. I call, we call it Café con pan. So, Cafe, which is three and two at the same time. Got it? So I'm gonna ask you a big favor if with your hands, you can do that. Cafe con pan, cafe con pan, cafe con pan. So this is my little or for you. So if you can join me, because this is later, so I'm gonna ask you a big, I'm gonna show you some example of music I'm gonna play and I wanna you keep in that. So, cafe con pan, cafe con pan and say that, so there's three and two. The, the thing, imagine, this is the earth, but when you play this instrument, you don't play with the palitos, you play with a special um, sticks, which is the, um, what's it called? The, the horn of the deers. So, and, and what is, antlers, thank you. So enters. So when they play this, the, the deer has a specific meaning for the indigenous. 
So if this animal is really important because it's connected, you know, to the fit with the earth and also the antlers with the sky. When they play the antlers with the turosher, this, it means the balance between the earth and the sky. So, and when you hear this most, this rhythm, you're gonna hear a lot in all of this indigenous music. It has a really, 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 really deep, deep meaning. And when I found that, for me, it was like, wow, I love to play Bach. I love to play all of that, you know? But something simple like that, simple, simple, like you say simple, it has this really deep, deep connection with our spirits, you know, with this conception of life. Um, that's what I started doing this lectures of in the because this is really important it was really important for me the people has to know this so and also like i say it's recycling i'm gonna show you another instruments uh you can see this you can see from there i don't know if you like mm, let's see i'm gonna start i'm gonna stop sharing this yes we can see okay i'm gonna stop sharing for this and i'm gonna show you this so Somebody can tell me what it is. Somebody is it can a part of celebrating death? Well, yeah, it is. It's an skeleton, but it's an instrument. It's an important instrument, and I want like you hear this. So, well, let me do something like this. And I want like you close your eyes for a moment and think you are really close in a space, something and the wind is coming from you. So, like I said, this simple thing, it has something, a meaning, a meaning, a powerful meaning. This one is called a hecat, which is the energy of the wind. It's the beginning and also the end. Why? I ask you why. Because when you're born, you take your first breath, and when you die, you take your last breath. Yes. So this one is really, really important in our culture. So dead is a deep, you know, you see, oh, day of the dead, or we have this a special connection. So when I grew up, when I was grew up, so I went to the cemetery with my grandma. I was like three or four years old and we clean the tombs, you know, and we bring food and we spend the, almost all the day and all the families there. And remember, you know, singing, drinking, it was like a party. You still, if you go to Oaxaca, you're gonna see that for Day of the Dead or you go to Chiapas and especially in Michoacan and in these indigenous places, because the connection what we have with the dead, it's important. So in, in here in United States or in the Western culture, you don't talk too much about that, but in the indigenous, it's really, really important. You know, it's something I think is really, really, it's a sacred thing for us. And it's not like to be a fear of that or not to be, it's like, um, that's what it, this this special energy we don't call it a god remember so this one was the meaning of goddess or god it was for the western thing to put it when the spanish came imagine the spanish came and they saw this somebody playing they said what is this this is the dead this is the devil they didn't understand our culture and after that, that's why they kill us almost, up, you know, because they didn't understand this, the conception of what, and, and it just not just in Mexico, in many cultures around the world. So this conception is really profound. And also like, remember I said the four elements of nature. So this instrument has the four elements 
of nature. Why? I ask him why. Somebody can tell me. Or maybe I can ask you like, because I have all the names. That's what I do with my students. <laughs> you want me to do that? Uh, so somebody know why this one has the four elements of life, this specific instrument? No? Think about it. We talk about the elements and all of this. No? Nope. Yes, or something. Um, the element of wind? There's one. But this instrument, remember, how is the representation uh, of all the elements? Yeah, it's, you probably can connect it with earth or fire, but I'm, I'm trying to like connect it with water, and I have no idea how to. Okay, I want to tell you why. To create this instrument, this one is clay. To create the instrument, what you need? Earth. Water. Clay, and you earth. know? And then you mix with what? Water. With water. You mix it. Up. And then you shape it and everything. And what you need it after that? Fire. Obviously. You put it inside of the fire. And then to play, wind Ta -da. <laughs> you see so how is the connection in like i said before all of this it has this representation and has a representation of animals this ocarinas let me play something for you show you another one See, and these little ones, you see, you cannot see, but just like an eagle, like an animal. And I have a collection of all of these instruments and, uh, and we can spend hours talking about them. But my point was like, you can see all this connection with indigenous music to the nature and the meaning, which is really, really, really powerful. Do you understand that? So, and I'm gonna go in to the other thing. So in indigenous music, like in the classical music, you know, we have the strings, we have the, uh, the woodwinds, we have the percussion instruments. Also, the indigenous music has something like that. We don't have strings. Well, there is one particular instrument, but we don't know where it came from, probably from Africa. Um, they have uh, like a specific instrument that they found it in the south of Mexico, and they're still researching where it came from. But we have, the indigenous music has this particular drums, we call tuncules. or teponastis. It represents with the water, it's connected with the water. And usually they play like that. And 
And this gun has different, different, different like uh, like uh, size. You can find like a small ones and big ones. So we have different different drums. I don't have the drums here because it's really big. It's called Wewet. I don't even hear about. So it's a big, it's like the father of the drums. And we have a small drums. This is for a specific, uh, it's called Chontal music. This one is the small one, but it's like seven of them. And this one from the, this one is small to the big one. And you play like with this particular, uh, flute, which you can play pretty much traditional music. You see, it's like a little out of tune, and I try. It's super hard to play this, and actually to play in tune, I try sometimes to play like tra like classical music. like a piccolo you know and this one is like i start playing this when i was three years old so i start playing this with the with my family let's see let's go back for the some questions sometimes i talk too much <laughs> no questions just admiring right now <laughs> okay so i'm gonna continue with the the presentation we're gonna go to Europe, you know, European instruments. So remember when the Spanish came, they were conquered by the Moros for around eight centuries. And they brought it, obviously their culture, their food, their diseases, there's so many things, you know. Um, and and it's, talking about the music, they brought it, in the Mexican music, we have always the music close with the dance. Uh, they brought these country dances, which was jotillas, seguidillas, fandangos, zapateados. Later on, they transformed in jarabes, jaranas, and guapangos. Hear this, jarabe, jaranas, guapango. Do you check this? You know, in the Spanish, we have a lot of this, which is from the Spanish, but remember, they were conquered by the Arabic for how long? Let's see if you're really paying attention. For how long they were conquered? Eight centuries. Yes, eight centuries. Thank you. So we have in the language, so not just in the music, all this. And remember what I say, ta 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 you're gonna find a lot of this in the Arabic music. It's super, super interesting to this. Um, and also the language, there's a specific instrument I'm gonna show you later, um, which I don't have. I go to school and it's super hard to have all this instrument in my house. So hold on. And the instruments, they brought it all the brass instruments, you know, the string instruments, and the country dances, their food, all of this, that's the influence. I gotta move on quickly and I wanna show you this. So now we have, oh, hold on. I'm gonna show you, let me see if you can hear this. Can you hear this? So, somebody know who's this composer? 
important in Mexico. Do you know Steven who's this composer or you hear this song before? I chose this one to represent all this European because this composer really, really fits exactly, you know, put it, he, he really, he found the way of the Mexican music and with all these instruments, which is Silvestre Revueltas. He was one of the most amazing composers from Mexico. And that piece is Ocho por Radio. Imagine you are in the little town. He really makes this sense with the music and you find this unbelievable. So if you know, if you can write it down with Silvestre, who Silvestre Revueltas was, one of the most important composers from Mexico. Um, and it's like, similar like the Stravinsky, literally. Um, what was his last name again? Silvestre Revueltas. Um, we're going to go to the African roots. Oh, sorry. Let me remember this flute. It's that one. And remember what I say, all the, the drums and the total share. This one is a chontal music. Remember. Remember the three and two. I'm sorry. Um, I just want to add. Um, yes. Yeah, so it was it was pretty obvious that it's African root because of rhythm. So that's why we didn't um, guess that this is Mexico music. Well, yes and not. This is what I want to tell you. This kind of particular you know, you're going to find definitely in African music. You're going to find the Arabics all here in Americas. But this one, before the Spanish came, you're going to find it in the, it's called Danza de Concheros, which is the, the right now, the Aztec dancers. And you're going to find that. that taka, 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 taka. The point is, this is what I told my students. Which one influenced which? There is a particular way, like the pentatonic scales also, you see in different cultures from Asia, Mexico, Africa, all of this. There's a particular, I think, is the way how humans create things, how we perceive this. And this particular rhythm also. So we are connected, that's the point. This is always I want to try to say that instead of dividers, we look the connection. And this is the thing. This is the beautiful thing of music. Sometimes say, oh, this is influenced by this. Yes, there's influence. But sometimes it's there. How, you know, like what is what's first? No, it's just like a human thing. Like the pentatonic scale. Oh, it's from, from Asia, from, from Africa from uh, Latin America. No, it's like a human thing. Personal language. We're connected. That is the, the connection that we have. You know, as a human no. being, we have this amazing connection. No, no. I think that's one of the most beautiful things about music is being able to share our cultures and create new things and share ideas and expression and emotions as people. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And right now, I think this is the most important thing, you know, like we need to find the way how we unify ourselves. Remember, As well, yes, Valerie? No, no, uh, no. So that's, that's what I realized when I was like 13, probably because uh, I've chosen piano. And that's what I was realizing that music is it's something consonant that um, shows us timeline of everything where everything is connected. It's kind of like water. So it's 
it's going to be when I'm going to die. It was when I was born. So that's something amazing. Definitely. And this, check it out. This. We are connected, but we are different. This is important to recognize. And the most, imp most important than, than, I don't know, when I came here, you know, to United States, it's like, oh, this melting pot, you know, like the melting pot and, but what is the melting pot you get into? And then what is your culture? Where's everything? So we're in the Bay Area and we have this, but if you go to other places, you know, I've been traveling this, it's like, uh, it's not bad to be white. The thing is like the most part, everything is like, it has to suppress everything. No. And we need to recognize like we're different. But when we recognize like we're different, since you know, we look different, size, everything, color, but we're connected. So one of my elders, you know, the elders in Guatemala, one day I was in a ceremony, he said this really important thing. We are like our hands. Our hands have five different fingers and they're different. They do different things and they're different, but they're connected. Same like our humans, like all this, we're different and we bring our things. It's like a salad bar, you know? If you see the melting pot, you put it a cheese and, and, the, and the flavors, and then it's a cheese. It's gonna be all at the top, it's gonna be what, you know? When you put a salad bar, you know, you put the lettuce and this and that. So all this combination of beautiful things, we gotta think in that way. So this is what is the music is important because every little thing like from here, from there is there. It have this, oh, you hear this, this, the, oh, this is from Africa, or this is, or maybe it's not, but it's there, it's one little thing. That's, that's what I want to, to ha like you can have this and your with this, this lecture, you have this experience. And I'm gonna finish with this, the African roots. And I'm gonna say to the Veracruz, Veracruz is one of the most important places. Like, you know, when the, the Hernan Cortez came from La Habana, it was sent from, the, from, from La Habana, Veracruz. He came to Veracruz and he burned his ships. And he brought these African slaves too, but he brought all this music, culture, and all that stuff. Uh, and there was a particular, a particular in Veracruz. There's, you can see if you go, not just there, but Veracruz has that's important um, in the history. There is a, uh, um, what's it called? Um, a person, which is Gaspar Janga, and he was a king. This is his, this is his, um, nobody told this, but this is a history of the 33 black uh, Africans. And that was the first, the first 33 African slaves free in the whole continent. So when Gaspar Janga came, he was, he escaped and he escaped with other 32 African slaves and he was fighting to the Spanish. And so the Spanish, they, they say, like, say, okay, let it go. So they were free. And that was the first like guerrillas fighting with the, with um, the, the Spanish. After then, well, they, they captured and they killed him, but it is important to say this, you know, because nobody think in Mexico we have Africa. Yes, we have, you know, my, if my side of my mom, my uh, grandpa, no, great grandpa, my grandpa and was mixed indigenous and black. And side of my mom, the other side is white and indigenous. And so we have all of this. And pretty much you in a way, you know, um, and the music in Veracruz or in Mexico, you're gonna find you're gonna find just a few drums, not many drums. Um, we have these sones of Mexico, which is the representation of all of this what I've been talking: indigenous, European, and African. 
uh, what is this? This is a generic name of the music produced in the America. We have sones cubanos, sones, you know, uh, but in Mexico we have sones abajeños, so many different. Let me put a little bit of that. Let's see. So you're going to find with this music, all these three, I said the confluence, like a river, you know, in one particular general music, which is the sones. Uh, and this style of music, it's always musical, have lyrical and dance and they talk about love description of myths legends characters landscapes and animal as well political and religious event there is one particular song from song jarocho is called um el chuchumbe and they talk about a priest they laugh about that and that was from the 16th century uh, it, it was really, really amazing. This uh, they found this, you know, and and they still play in Veracruz. So where these sones are play? Sones de tierra caliente, which is this. Pretty much, I did this, and you can see all of the Mexico, and you're gonna see. I'm gonna show you where all these sones are playing. Sones de tierra caliente, we call Michoacán and Guerrero, which here is. This is the coast, and you're gonna, there's, there's a lot of African influence here. And they call sones de gustos. And sones calicienses o abajeños o de mariachi, like you, you know the mariachi. So the mariachi, if you hear the trumpet, so the mariachi, traditional mariachi doesn't use any trumpets. So that was later. They added later on the, at the beginning of the 20th centuries because it, for the influence for the septetos habaneros and they put in the mariachi, the trumpets, but that was later on, but the traditional mariachi doesn't use any trumpet. So, and this one there from Jalisco, Colima and Nayarit. You see, this is Colima, so this part. And we have Sones de la Costa Chica Tixla, which is Guerrero y Oaxaca. A lot of African influence too. And Sones Ismeños and Ismo de Tehuantepec. It's over here in Chiapas too. And we have Sones Jarochos, which all this from Veracruz. Remember what I say? So Cuba we have over here. So when they came, the Spanish came this from Cuba and they came here to Veracruz. And after that, they spread out all over to the Americas. So we have Sones Huastecos y Huapangos, which is from Veracruz, this part of North Veracruz, Tamaulipas, and San Luis Potosí. Um, let's see, I think I have a few minutes, and I'm gonna show you a little bit of this instrument, which is important. Uh, this is a, a, a beautiful instrument from, from Veracruz. Remember what I say, the jarana. So this is the jarana, but this one came from Europe, but in, they play in a different way. Sorry. But when they came, imagine this is like a traveling. So came from Europe, the Spanish, come to Veracruz, they mix with the, the indigenous, with the African people and all of this. And they develop this style of music, which is song jarocho, would they play like this. They strumming. The strumming is the way the percussive. It's a percussive instrument. So 
you, and also in all the songs, like you're not gonna see, they playing like this. So you never gonna see like, sometimes they do this. Mostly, these legends from indigenous people, the way how they play, there's, oh, actually they use, I'm gonna step, uh, they use stomping, you know, usually they stomp. So that's how it's also the other percussive instrument. <laughs> It's pretty much like I say, it's they're connected with the dance all the time. The Mexican music is connected with the dance. So questions, I think it's a almost time to go. And I try to be my best going to <laughs> It was really great, Miguelito. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sorry, I was having some technical problems here. I missed your question no, no, no. on the Revueltas there. Um, was that from Cincinnati or what, what was that piece from? A little, played? yes. Yes. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. I think it's in Semaya or El Chopo Radio. I forget about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. He's an incredible composer. Uh, have yeah. you heard of this composer, uh, Gabriela Ortiz? She's Gabriel. really on the yeah. rise. Yeah, yeah. She's with the LA Phil Harmonic right now, but I see her everywhere now. She really has some interesting music out there. Yeah. So, well, if question, I think we have a few more. Maybe I have one have... question. Yes. Um, what is what is your name? Sorry. Uh, Khalid. Khalid. It's uh, an Arabian name I'm from Saudi Arabia. Um, ah, Khalid. Mm -hmm. So I was real familiar with uh, you were talking about the the rhythms, the you know uh -huh. that kind of. But um, my question for you is, uh, can you join us from our lectures? <laughs> <laughs> if I can join us for a lecture. <laughs> they'd like to have you back again so Yo, what what was that other instrument behind you on the couch though i had that so, other one okay so it's another from veracruz this one is the jarana you know yeah and the other one is also is guitarra de son and the only problem is like it I tried to tune in and my string was. Oh, okay. But you can hear this. Okay, yeah. If you play, this is like the oud. I like the way that sounds. You see? Yeah. It's, I like the other one too. Yeah, that's how they. Yeah. <laughs> But the thing they are strumming i don't have they use like a bone of a of a cow a big thing you said a bone play. of a cow yes to play it so because they 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 hit it, hit it. now do you strum that one harder than the other one no 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 the other one that one is just picking the other okay. one is your strumming okay yeah. Miguelito, I have to yes. ask you, uh, we, we have a code word every week for, uh, for those who have attended the lecture. And I usually ask what your favorite dessert is. Do you have a favorite dessert? Yes. Well, I don't eat too much sugar, but yes, I, when I was in Mexico, yes. There is one specific from my town. It's called leche quemada, which means born milk. Some, maybe that's the literal translation, but I found it later. It's kind of like the creme brulee. Oh, oh yeah. Because remember also, we, Mexico, we were conquered by the French people and <laughs> they, they 
they brought also this thing, you know, we mix things. And uh, and we have this particular like creme brulee, Mexican creme brulee from the south. And it's really, it's kind of the same. You know, yeah, I really yeah. like it. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So all, uh, leche quemada? Leche quemada. Yeah. Leche que oh, I'll accept that our, our creme brulee and, uh, uh -huh. as everyone. Yeah. Christian Martinez, you know, you say yeah. Like he wrote, he wrote something on the. <laughs> uh, <laughs> burnt milk, young. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Thanks so much for being here tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you for inviting me, and and uh, I try to thank do my best, giving you the most I can do it in, in one hour. Oh, so. it was yeah, it was wonderful. It's great to hear you play and sing and. And, uh, I, and yeah, I wish we had a whole I, I wish it can be in person because it's more like, you know, everybody sing with me, plays, and, and it's fun. So yeah. oh, thank you. It was very interesting. Uh, also, seeing a lot of uh, Middle Eastern influence in, uh, in Mexico, because I have some friends from there. And a lot of the times we say it's hard to tell the difference between each other sometimes until you start <laughs> speaking your language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, you know, and also the food. You, you see the pastor, you know, it, that came from from Morocco and all that places. Mm -hmm. So the middle. Mm -hmm. Thank uh, you so much. Muchas gracias. Gracias, Steven. Thank you, Steven. Uh, Thanks for right, inviting Thank you. For inviting it's me. good to uh, share the, uh, you know, to share what you said about just coming from different backgrounds of influences. I mean, that's the biggest thing. Yeah, like you this said, is, we're all connected. Exactly. This is the point. Remember, so we have the connection. Don't forget that. Even like we, they want us the bias. So we're different, but we're connected, and we what we need to find that. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And knowing the history, like you said, knowing the exactly. gave, it, gave us the history, giving us the lesson. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll hang out here a little bit. If there's anybody who needs to ask me any questions, maybe they do. We don't need. To, uh, want to keep you but you're welcome to stay here if you'd like uh, and, you know, we want to uh, play some more instruments you know what i'm saying <laughs> I, I imagine gotta, he needs to go. yes i imagine but he has thank to you so play. much thanks yes Take care. all right thank you all right good night, good night. Okay, anybody have any other questions here this evening or, or should we put it? Hey, I'm not gonna lie, this is pretty cool though, you uh, doing this because this is definitely, you know, opened my eyes to a lot of things. Right? Hey, thank you, Anthony. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's been very educational for me too. It's, it's a lot hard. of knowing how much like different influences of different uh, places all share alike, are all yeah. parallel to each other. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Well, he was here. I mean, it makes me think about even the music that we listen to today. Came, I think about it all the time. Is that everything originated from something? You know, everything. Yeah, from something. yeah. We don't live in a vacuum, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, he was wonderful with sharing that. Yeah, you know, all of those different influences in, in Mexico. He, it would be great to have him for a whole semester of a class on. on uh, it would. Mexico. Yeah. Because yeah. there's so many instruments out in the world that you don't even know. It's just oh yeah, blows my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm still learning about hey, different well. instruments and, and music from different cultures. And, so, know, what so. instruments do you play? My main instrument. I'm a brass player. My main instrument is the trombone, okay. and I pl I play a little bit of cello and bass, but I wouldn't ever sell myself that way and then of course you have to learn sort of like the traditional band instruments and string instruments and things when you're coming to school but but uh, but no as a my professional instrument was trombone gotcha. yeah. i was crazy that he had uh, uh the uh, it's like a i don't know what is that what like a uh, the thing he was oh, oh the skull uh, that yeah, he was or playing even that the other things the other little small yeah. little was it like a i don't even know what that called yeah i, I, I don't remember the name of it yeah i have to look it up too but I see we're I see what time is it? Eight forty. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Well, good everyone. I'm gonna uh, call this meeting. It's great talking with you. Have a good rest of your evening. All and right, I'll my man. Uh, thank you, Anthony, and I'll, I'll see you guys next week. All right, have a good okay, night. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.